guys, and welcome to Roy Meets World, a monthly vlog series here on Attractions Magazine. My name is Roy, and today I am here at Epcot. Now, several months ago, I went over to Magic Kingdom, and I did a video called Magic Kingdom Through the Decades, where I showcased from Magic Kingdom's opening back in 1971 up until the present day, about every five year uh, intervals or so, I showcase some of the rides that have been built and the progression of rides through the years up until the present day. Now, I came to Epcot because Epcot has a lot of cool things coming in the coming years between the Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. So I wanted to do the same here. Epcot opened on October 1st, 1982, and there's a lot of things that are still here, and then there's things that have been repurposed and things that have been changed, things that are just brand new, and I want to check those out today. So without further ado, I'm going to go and ride that right there, Spaceship Earth that opened on opening day, October 1st, 1982. Let's go. The entrance here of Epcot has changed significantly throughout the years with the Leave a Legacy plaques, as well as Spaceship Earth itself has changed a lot with narrators and various show scenes, but the ride itself, the idea, the concept is still very much the same after about 35 years, so let's go ride it. Spaceship Earth is one of my favorite rides at Epcot and Walt Disney World in general because of its dedication to Epcot's premise of technological and cultural innovation, so let's go ride it. Got a fast pass. All right, first ride, Spaceship Earth. I'm excited. I'm really excited. I love this ride. <laughs> Spaceship Earth, right back there. I've entered into Project Tomorrow, which is all really all around me right now. So my next stop is gonna be, it's gonna be over at the Living Seas, which isn't really the Living Seas anymore. It's the Seas with Nemo and friends, sadly, but that opened up on January 15th, 1986. So let's go over there. See, so most of the rides and attractions that opened during this time, during the 80s, like the Wonders of Life, Cranium Command, Body Wars, Maelstrom, They've all either been completely abandoned or completely repurposed, but the exhibits in the tanks over here, I'm assuming are more or less in the same kind of condition that they were back when this pavilion opened back in 86, I believe. So I'm gonna go ahead and head over to the tanks over there. All right, so I entered over there through the gift shop. This is Turtle Talk with Crush right there. Right behind me, this is the exit for the Nemo ride. There's a uh, part of the tank which you can go upstairs to get a better look at that tank upstairs, so I'm gonna do that in just a second. There's an exhibit over here. They do a scuba diving demonstration right over here, occasionally. Have a small tank display over here as well. And then this is the 
manatee exhibit, which I'm gonna go check out as well. So right now I am on the first floor for the manatee viewing area, but I was able to get up there and get a nice up close and personal look with that manatee as he or she was eating, munching on some greens. So I'm gonna go upstairs now and get an aerial view looking down on the manatee. So I was right down there just a second ago and I didn't notice this, there's two manatees. There's this one and then there's another one that's kind of over there in the corner. But this is a cool area where they get to do demonstrations and they talk about conservation and environmentalism when it comes to protecting the manatees. So this is really cool. I'm always a fan of coming over here to check out the manatees. So that's where I just was, right over there, checking out the manatees on both levels. I'm not going to explore the entirety of the seas exhibit because there is so much to see between here, the small exhibits over here, and over here. Turtle Talk is its own attraction altogether, but I am going to head back over here to look into the main tank, the main exhibit, the undersea viewing area. This is an area that I can't expect to have changed too much in the 30 years since it's been open. This is just such a massive, massive tank. You can fit Spaceship Earth in this tank. Wow, look at all of these fish congregating over here. I think they are being fed right now because this is a very popular area to come over and check them out, but I've never seen this many fish in this one tank over here. That's insane. Look at that. So that whole area was over here. As you walk in, is a dolphin exhibit. Looks like they have a little snowman here, still from the holidays. And there's a dolphin right there. That's so cool. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and head on out to my next thing now. All right, so I came inside Interventions West over here, which is kind of right behind Character Spot, and Club Cool is back in that direction to look at the Epcot timeline because I'm having trouble with this time of year right here. I'm kind of in the 1990s region right now as far as my next thing that I'd like to do. The only fact is that there's not really anything to do. Everything that opened up in this time is now closed. The most uh, obvious one is the Wonders of Life Pavilion and all the rides that were in there. Like I already mentioned, Body Wars and Cranium Command, that kind of thing. There was a big gap in this time because this is when they were building Disney MGM Studios, which is now Hollywood Studios, so there's nothing really to do. Uh, I guess I could walk over to the Wonders of Life Pavilion over there and just kind of sit in front of it and talk about it, but that's kind of as close as I can get to the 1990s region. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and stop off at Club Cool real quick just to get a refresher, but then I will be heading over to the Wonders of Life Pavilion, or near it. Oh, geez. All right, so right behind me, that is the Wonders of Life Pavilion that opened up on October 19th, 1989. It had the attractions Body Wars, Cranium Command, The Making of Me. It had a lot of cool exhibits and displays in there. It has since closed, but it is currently utilized from year to year for the Food and Wine Festival. They do demonstrations and displays in there, but it is closed right now, so obviously I can't go inside, but that is the only attraction from this time period that I'm looking at, the 1990s, that opened during that time. So I can't really do anything for the 1990s, and what is becoming more apparent and interesting to me is that a lot of rides in Epcot particularly, uh, they all had overlays and kind of re-themings, and what that means is that a ride that was built and put here has since changed. It's still structurally the same ride, but they've re-themed it. So I'm sitting across from the Universe of Energy that had a couple different iterations in it. I'm sitting next to Test Track, which has had a couple different versions of that. Over in the Imagination Pavilion, the Imagination ride has had three different versions. The theater next to Imagination uh, had Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, it had Captain EO, it had the Pixar Short Film Festival. So. If you're kind of getting that vibe, that's the confusing thing that I'm kind of dealing with, is that a lot of rides that I'd like to do and showcase are not the original versions, but they are an overlaid version of the original. So I'm taking a couple liberties trying to showcase some of these rides, and if something is structurally the same, and it's... So if, if it's like the Imagination Pavilion, right? If it's that theater, and the only thing that's really changed about it is what they're screening, then to me, I consider that still true to the original. If it's something like Frozen Ever After, where Maelstrom opened up in 1988, I believe, and even though the track is still the same, everything else is completely different about that. So I kind of consider that a new ride. So that's kind of the basis that I'm going to be going off of, that I'm going to try to go off of, because it's going to get a little bit confusing. And then there's things like this, where I just have holes in the timeline that I'm trying to showcase, but 
thanks for coming along and giving me the time of day anyway. I'm doing my best. All right, so now I am skipping forward about half a decade and my options are still a little bit sparse for this time period because the universe of energy is closed as well as the circle of life over in the land pavilion. So what I am going to go do is go explore the Interventions Building, which opened up on July 1st. 1994. So by the way, the opening dates that I'm providing are very loose because I'm sure that these kinds of places had soft openings as well as technical rehearsals and the inside of this has changed completely since it was open but still gonna check it out. So this part of Interventions East has some cool hands-on exhibits over here. The uh, Colortopia exhibit, which this one's a lot of fun, and then the newest Spectacular, which this one's really cool too. So right across from that is Mouse Gear, which has the largest selection of merchandise in all of Epcot. And this store is very, very big. It pretty much has anything that you want when it comes to Disney merchandise. So that was Interventions East, orienting myself with Spaceship Earth here. Now I'm gonna head over here to Interventions West. Interventions West has become drastically different by becoming just a giant character spot. Over here you can meet Mickey, Minnie, and Goofy. And then on this side you can meet Baymax and Joy and Sadness. And currently, right now, you can meet Wreck-It Ralph over there, too. All right, so right behind me, that is Journey into Imagination with Figment that opened up on June 1st, 2002. It replaced Journey into Your Imagination, which only ran for about two years, which replaced, from 1999, Journey into Imagination, the original Journey into Imagination, which opened up, I believe, the year after Epcot opened up. So this ride's been through a few different versions, but the current version, Journey into Imagination with Figment, I'm gonna go ride it. Absolutely not. Uh, this is one of our discoveries, the figment of imagination. Hello! Who is this? It's Figment! Figment? I think I told you not to interfere! But you've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination! Now, all together, if you would please read line three. A lot of the structural integrity from the original iteration of the ride is still here. The turntable for the Dreamfinder sequence of the original, you can still find it in the Imageworks area. Soaring Around the World is one of my new favorite attractions here at Disney that opened up just a couple of years ago after they redid it from Soarin' Over California. I always thought it was kind of ironic that Soarin' was in the land pavilion. Probably could have gone in like a sky pavilion, but it says a 40 minute wait. Let's see how long it takes. Oh, there we go. My name is Patrick, and I'll be your chief flight attendant today. We'll begin boarding in a few minutes, but first I'd like to acquaint you with some important safety
Netflix. Okay, so that was interesting. I just got done with Soren. I sat in the far right bottom corner, so everything on the screen had kind of a curve to it just because of how the concave screen is. But my next stop, it's probably dark outside because I took pretty much exactly 40 minutes. Uh, but my next stop is going to be Test Track, which originally opened up in 1999. I believe it was March 16th, and it reopened uh, in 2012, on December 6th, 2012. This is going to be the current version that I'm going to go be doing right now. Well, it's almost dark outside, but definitely by the time I get to Test Track and get on the ride, it'll be dark for sure. All right, got a tiny little shred of light still in the sky, but I'm here to ride Test Track and hop in the single rider line, and then after this, do my very last thing. Dark now. Okay, I did not know how much I needed to ride Test Track tonight. I was getting a little bit sleepy, but that really woke me up. I also realized I haven't ridden that in a long time. Uh, I got to see the cool new space restaurant, the construction that's going on between Mission Space and Test Track, so that's that's going on right there, so that was kind of cool to see. So my next stop, and my final stop, is going to be over at Frozen Ever After, which was Maelstrom. That opened up uh, July 5th, 1988, and then Frozen Ever After opened up June 21st. 2016. So I think I got those dates right, but that's gonna be my final stop of the night, which is good because I'm, I'm getting a little bit sleepy. But Frozen is a beautiful ride, so I'm gonna make my way over there and and ride it. So the single rider line was posted at a 35 minute wait, which ended up being pretty accurate. It was about like 40 minutes or so, but that's okay. But now I'm heading into the World Showcase to go over to Norway. All right, I am passing through Mexico right now to head into Norway. This is weird that this is the first time that I've been in the World Showcase today at the very, very end of my little Disney Through the Decades challenge. I thought I'd been here a lot more. Looks like a bit of a backup for standby, but I am super excited because I have not done this in kind of a long time. 65 minute wait. Off of 
Cars and Ever After. That ride is, is still very impressive to me with its animatronics and how they took an old ride and they just made it so new and unique and exciting, honestly. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and head back to the front of Epcot to go ahead and wrap this video up, but I'm so glad that I got to do it. It was so much fun. It's still a 65 minute wait. I'm heading back through the park and they have a lot of the booths already set up for the Festival of the Arts, which should start here in a few weeks here at Epcot. Uh, right over there, there's the Odyssey Building, which I know has a lot of cool stuff for Festival of the Arts too. So I'm really excited about that festival to start. All right, so I just came from the World Showcase. I'm back over by the Fountain of Nations in between Interventions West and East, and I'm gonna go ahead and head out of the park. All right, so ending the video in the same place that I started it. Is it lazy? Is it poetic? Is it both? Probably. I don't know. I had a great day today getting to do a lot of stuff at Epcot, honestly. Just as an excuse of doing Epcot through the decades, I got to go ride Figment, I got to go ride Soren Test Track, Frozen Ever After, Spaceship Earth. I did a lot of stuff today, and it was weird that it was mostly in Future World. I didn't at all rule out going to uh, the World Showcase to do any of this, but most of everything was just kind of centralized in Future World. And no complaints, it was kind of nice not having to ping pong back and forth across the World Showcase Lagoon. I don't know, I think I was most surprised of what the state Epcot is right now, because it's a big hot topic about Epcot, and it's original concept of being a cultural and technological innovative hub and now it's all about you know IPs and, and everything but the structure and the skeleton of what was here is still here it's just being utilized in different ways and I, I think that's kind of interesting where the formula is still there but they're trying to make it work in ways that make it more Disney and attract more people and it's really doing that job I don't know there are things that I do wish that I could have gotten to see like you know, the Wonders of Life Pavilion, getting to do Body Wars and Cranium Command, getting to go ride Horizons. Pretty much everything that was Epcot that's been gone for like 20 years, I did not get to do. And, you know, that's sad, but I trust the people that are in charge that are going to bring something great and beautiful to Epcot, you know, in the decades to come. Because I think that they know what they got here is very important and they're going to do a good job to kind of keep it special. So there it is. Hopefully that was a, a look at Disney through the decades, at least Epcot through the decades. More or less, right, I, I did what I could with what I had to kind of work with around here. But this is Roy Meets World. This is a monthly podcast. No, it's not a podcast. What am I talking about? <laughs> I should do a podcast. This is a monthly vlog series here on the Attractions Magazine channel. My name is Roy. Uh, if you want to follow me personally, I have some links right there where I do a lot of similar things. So you can come check me out there as well. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot of other videos like this on Attractions channel of me doing challenges or, or just walking around and talking about different things that I find interesting at theme parks. So I will see you next month and have a great day. Goodbye.